Thank you for joining Art in the Mornings. I'm going to go over the second half of the planetary chart for our character. Um, just going to do this really quick. I'll leave a link to the first video, which was a lot longer. Uh, so their ascending house is Aquarius. They enjoy quietly getting a rise out of people. They like science, metaphysics, anything advancing the human race. These people um, are someone that everyone likes to go to them for advice on whatever. Um, their profession is or what they're good at. Uh, they're very provocative. They accept everyone as equal. People like them. They're very humanitarian-ish. Um, they feel different or special throughout their life. They dress quirky. Uh, they're resistant to change and with a stubborn streak, which is really weird because of the, you know, humanitarian and progressive nature of this person. But Anyways, their second house, uh, they're aggressive and competitive when it comes to making money. Uh, they're, that's because of the ruler Mars. Even if blessed with good financial resources, you would not be satisfied in life and shall continue to make more come what may. Uh, so they're just very money driven. They, they want to make more, more, more. Um, I guess it could be attributed with greed as well. I mean, they make many impulsive decisions with finances, again, with that irresponsibility. Um, they can be a bit extravagant with their spending. They love material resources. So their third house is ruled with Gemini, which is really great. Uh, this person's really, really good at socializing. They're really, really close with any siblings. Um, communication is a huge part of their life. Uh, their thoughts and words are both very clear, very honest. Their fourth house is in Leo, maybe too overpowering of loved ones. They need to be the center of attention in the home. They can often feel that people need to be doing things in their way, even though people will find their own ways in life and their own standards as opposed to this person's. Um, this person seems a bit selfish. Uh, fifth house is in Capricorn. This placement can be the epitome of the idea of do something you love and the money will follow. So this person, they, they love their job. Um, that's apparent in a lot of other places in their chart as well. Uh, they don't like huge groups of people. They don't like gambling, so they're cautious. They're creative, but only with the things that they are interested in. Uh, sixth house is in Cancer. A cancer person should always be involved in some service aspect. Yeah, you know, they're dealing with betterment of mankind. Again, with the humanitarian thing, they need to learn not to involve themselves in other people's problems. So the service should be compassionate as opposed to an emotional service. So that kind of rules out anything like psychology or anything like that. They often have stomach or breast issues. Success in the workplace has a huge impact on their emotional state. Again, they care a lot about their career. Charity, medicine, or dietology. Um, seventh house is in Aquarius. They have a philosophical partnership with life, but they have a conflict to want to dominate others. So again, with the whole, they're extremely domineering towards people. The relationship is probably one that was created through humanitarian efforts where the two work great together as long as they are involved with work. But once they're alone, the relationship is lacking, the passion are lacking in something to keep it fulfilled. There is something bigger than the two of them that brought them together. Their eighth house is in Capricorn. If the eighth house is set in Capricorn, responsibility is something that doesn't seem to have value to this individual, again with the irresponsibility, which is really bad in conjunction with Saturn. Um, difficult circumstances in case Saturn is challenged, there's not enough rest and calm experiences in their life. The pressure caused by Saturn is always there to push us towards evolution, but with this position, this pressure can sometimes be overwhelming, and liberation is desired more than anything. They see hard circumstances that are easily avoidable. There's family issues, they lack structure, they lack a sleep schedule, lessons learned, and relationships fixed with strength of will and family matters. Okay, their ninth house is in Virgo. They don't do well with religion. They have thoroughly researched religion of choice, know everything about it, still feel someone needs to prove that it works. They're way too logical for religion. Uh, tenth house is in Scorpio. They're 
professional identity is one of power, mystery, and intensity. People are drawn to them, but they don't know how to approach this person. Your presence in other lives is so profound that it often changes them or their business entirely after working with you. All right, so this adds to the importance of their career. Uh, many contributions should be to the many rather than the few. So this person works to the betterment of society in some way. Uh, live in houses in Aries. They often take their temper out on material items like phones, computers. So I like to throw them. They are aggressive and assertive in their social circles. This person is probably a leader. They're very able to help others figure out what they want. They make connections impulsively, passionately, and may not have many deep friendships. You tend to keep in mind what you are getting out of people when meeting them. So, they're very... Like, I think that can fall back into the whole of being way too career driven. There is, like, it's a good thing what they're doing with their career, but it's like detrimental to them. Um, can lose them. The twelfth house is in Aquarius, where they can lose themselves in their service to others. Again, that uh, falls into their career. They're the introverted, artistic type. They use technology to find ways to help people. They want to make a unique and individual mark on culture in the world. They can fulfill themselves through humanitarian efforts of a spiritual nature. They must set aside the ego to join universal life. Alright. Um, so there we have it. We've gone over the 12 houses of this person's chart. Again, go watch the first part to this um, horoscope character series to figure out more about it. Thank you for joining, and you guys have a lovely day.